Yo, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of It's Needed, the podcast, where we discuss real issues involving law enforcement in the community. It's your boy, Ryan Tillman, founder of Breaking Bears United, and I'm joined today by the light-skinned Warner himself, Mr. Oh No is a Popo. What's going on, AJ? In D.C. for Police Week, brother, and, and I am tired, <laughs> tired, tired. Oh, my goodness. Hey, for those of you who ain't been to Police Week, I highly recommend it. It is a humbling experience, but all is well, brother. How about you? Bro, I can see the bags under your eyes, bro. That's why you got that hey. hat sitting low. <laughs> hey, literally, probably. So we've been here two days, no, two nights, and I've probably got nine to ten hours of sleep total are you serious um man it's it's, it's just non-stop and and the, the crew that i'm with they are crazy um so you know we we laid it down at about 3 a.m last night and they were up at 9 a.m so it is uh it's non-stop so who, who you with out there tell us who you with so i'm with officer daniels i am with um chelsea lynn who is another internet personality um hook em and book them are here um just humanizing the badge just we got like pretty much the whole crew out here so good times man that's cool man i know uh next year for sure uh we will be out there making our presence known uh this year obviously with uh, the whole family situation couldn't make it out this year speaking of family we also got another special guest if you guys can't hear her in the background uh but i got my baby girl sitting on daddy's lap right now yeah this is, is rylan love Say what's up, boo. She she trying to grab this mic. She she yeah, she is. Not, fascinated not yet, with that. Not yet, mama. Not yet, mama. Yeah. So <laughs> not yet. <laughs> yeah. You'll not have yet. your we, time we, to shine. We'll, we'll have your time one day, baby. So oh, fair funny. foul, man. Fair foul. So you know, my, I, t- I let my yesterday was Mother's Day. So so I let the wifey. Or I didn't. I don't want to say I let the wifey. Wifey went to. Uh, the spa with her sister-in-law to treat herself so as she deserves she deserves it mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. but um you know so today so she went today and then you know I'm, I'm here on daddy duty so i got all three of my kids you know told my wife to be here at two o'clock so we can start the podcast and she's like oh babe we lost track of time fair or foul bro fair, fair or foul <laughs> so you know i got my baby girl uh, sitting you know, she I- riding the lap right now <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna answer that one because I know the outcome of it, so I'm, <laughs> I'm with no problems. <laughs> oh man, trick question. I love I love my baby. I love my baby, even though you know I'm doing lap duty right now. Hey, but you know what's funny is um this is the life of a police officer, balancing act, man, multitasking. Man, you know what I mean? And this it. is a side that people don't see often is mm-hmm. uh, you know, a lot of people know me specifically, obviously obviously as a police officer. Uh, others know me as being a speaker, professional speaker, um, you know, business owner, but they don't get to see dad often. They don't get to see the dad side of me. And so, uh, this is real cut. And that's what I love about this podcast, man, is, is real, man. Like it's transparent, it's real, you know, and as real as I got my, my daughter on my lap as I'm doing this podcast right now. And that's because, you know, you are listeners and viewers out there. You guys support us so much that, I would feel terrible if we let a week go by without you guys getting our, our, our podcast. So so there's that, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's no days off. No days off. None. None, bro. None. So so how, how is Police Week, man? Tell us about Police Week. Man, I, I tell you what. Um, Police Week is one of the most humbling experiences you, you, you will ever experience. Um, just going down to the actual memorial, seeing the names on the wall. Um, during this week, the survivors... Um, so the significant others of the uh, loved ones come down and they write, they bring like handwritten letters and they leave them on the wall, like from their kids, you know, I miss my daddy. I love you. Um, their, their significant others it, bring pictures and leave them against the wall. So it, it, it's a tearjerker, man, but it, it, it's a good time. I highly recommend it. Even if you're not a police officer, just, just go down there, look at the uh, memorial and it, it kind of puts things into perspective because, the wall is endless and every name is a police officer who had lost their life in a line of duty, a loved one, a father, a, 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 a wife, a husband, a son, a daughter like that. That's a life that was taken in the line of duty. So it just really puts things into perspective, man. Man, that's wild. Um, and, you know, I, I people have been telling me I need to make it down there and they're so right. One of these days, like I said, next year for sure. Next year, it's going on the calendar this year, so that way it's already planned out for next year. But that's de- something I definitely want to make it out to again because, you know, um, that's the reality of this job. You know, not everybody makes it home. And, uh, you know, that's a good lead into the Officer Down Memorial. Uh, do you have the numbers for the Officer Down right now, AJ? And we're at 41. 41. So, and I know, I can't remember where we were at last time, but I know where that's significantly up. I think I know that's more than three. 
since the last yeah. time we uh, we did it. And I and the only reason I know that is because I've been looking at my my phone every other day. I'm getting a notification for somebody that's uh, that's been dying in the line of duty. And the, the scary part about that is uh, right now leading the way for the year is uh, is police shootings. Mm-hmm. Police shootings is what's leading the way as far as you know, uh, officers dying in the light of duty. So that's what's scary, you know, because that tells me that, you know, people are becoming more reckless. People don't care for a lo- uh, life and uh, people are, you know, willing to go to wit's end in order to make a statement against police. So that's what's scary about it. Oh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. And, you know, that number just keeps climbing. Uh, you know, every podcast, I don't think we've had a podcast yet where it's been the same number. I don't think so either. I don't think so either. And that that would be the goal to to have a podcast like that, man. So I will say though, goal. speaking of life, man. So we we I told you guys on the last episode of the podcast we were going to start a campaign called Erase the Date, and I want to thank yeah. everybody that participated in that Erase the Date campaign. Uh, I don't know about you, AJ, but I had so many people reach out to me and just tell me that they actually had a date planned that they wanted to end their life or, uh, you know, that they were struggling with depression, whatever it may have been. And so um, that erase. If you ask me, man, that erase the date campaign was very, very successful. And we're going to keep that up yeah. man, because suicide is such a real topic and so scary, man, that, uh, you know, there should be no reason why somebody can't reach out for resources, you know, when they're when they're hurting. As, uh, I, I couldn't agree more, man. I've, I've had multiple messages from individuals saying that um, it, it helped them out tremendously. I've even had a couple of messages saying that, you know, we, we helped them erase that thought in their head and, and erase that date. So, you know, to me, it makes it all worth it. It, it. it makes it all worth it. All the effort, all the time, everything put into it, that's well worth it. So, couldn't be happier. We're we going to continue to push it. We're going to continue to push it. Exactly. And then on that same note, man, um, we, we we recently did a post called Passion. And, uh, man, that post did phenomenal. Um, and I think it was you and I discussing the officers that ran into the line of uh, fire and who does yeah. that. And we only do it because of passion. And that, yeah. that, that post did extremely well on social media. And the reason I bring that up, man, because that that's real stuff right there. Like a lot of people don't, we have some um, ignorant comments out there. People saying, you know, that's their job. They're supposed to do that. We had other people just, and I, and I could tell there's just trolls of the internet, people that just want to find, yeah. you know, uh, things to pick on. But the yeah. overwhelming response to that was phenomenal. And the, the mere fact that people recognize that what we do is dangerous and somebody has to do it, man, was tremendous. And what was even more cool was one of the guys that was actually in that video running into that shooting actually reached out to us as well. His wife actually did first, and then he reached out yeah. to us second. So it's just kind of crazy. crazy. Man, you talk about social media and the power of social media. Yeah. That was crazy, man. Yeah. So, something I found intriguing about the post is um, a majority of my um, social media following are not police officers. A majority of my following is um, community members. So when I posted that one, and then I, I posted another video on um, Facebook and Instagram of my partner Jones receiving an award at a baseball game, people were like hating on me. Like, you mean, you posting all this like pro police stuff. And I'm like, like it what? made me take a step back and think like, what? Like, what are you saying right now? Like, I'm a police officer. Like, what you mean? Like, of course, like I'm, for everybody listening, listen, please do not get it twisted. I am a police officer through and through. Do I know police officers make mistakes? Do I know that there are police officers out there that do bad things? Yes. But I will say it right now for the world to hear. A majority of police officers do their job flawlessly. I am pro police. I will continue to post police stuff. Like we, we talk about it all the time. Like we have a podcast about it. Like it just blew my mind. Like I'm a, I don't want to say a lot, but a handful of people actually like sent me DMs like, hey, you know, you posting all this pro police stuff. Like, I'm gonna have to remove you from my friend list. I'm just like, see, you know see what's you? crazy. Like, so, what's crazy about that statement, bro, is that we live in a world that you you're either left or you're either right. You, there is no it, in between. Man. And yes. so, unfortunately, sometimes when people see like, oh, you know, a whole bunch of positive police stuff, you have a group that's like, oh, I can't rock with this dude because you know what, he he's he's you know, supporting the, the police officers and we don't support the police officers. And then we have right. the group that's like, you know, far right to where, you know what, if we post anything negative about a police officer, they're like, oh, see, you're a sellout. You know, you can't do anything. You shouldn't be talking about police like that. And so that's the unfortunate reality that we live in today is that, 
you know, you can't be in the middle. And that's what BBU was created for. And I'm here to tell you and AJ's here to tell you that you can be in the middle. Like you can right. see the best of both worlds. You can call out the the worst of both worlds. You know what I mean? And you can do that successfully. Absolutely. And we're doing that. And that's what's cool about BBU and this podcast. It's needed is because, you know, we do have those that are able to start to see both sides of it. And until you can see both sides of it, you know, then we can't move forward. And that's with anything in life. Like it's the same thing in politics. And that's actually our topic for today. One of our topics is politics is like, you know, in politics, we've created a world where you're either Democrat or you're Republican. And if you're a Democrat, I'm not going to look at anything else unless, you know, uh, um, unless it's Democrat. If you're a Republican, you're like, I'm not going to hear anything. I'm not going to see anything else unless it's Republican. And, and I, and that's why I hate to identify with, you know, either party just because, you know, unfortunately, sometimes we get caught up in just allowing these the name of the party to be become our identifying marks of who we are as a person. You know right, what I mean? Like, right. like yep. that's not who I am. Like, I'm not exactly. I'm not Ryan, the Republican. You know what I mean? Or I'm not exactly, the Republican exactly. Ryan. or I'm not Ryan, the Democrat or the Democratic Ryan. Like, that's not me. You know yeah, what I mean? I'm Ryan. <laughs> Exactly. And when it comes down to it, I support good people doing good things, point blank, period, whether you're a police officer or you're not. And like, what's it look like for me to to promote the good that's going on in my community and not promote the police officers that are doing good in the community? Like, 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 come on, like, I, pick a side. Like, no, I am picking a side. Like, I'm picking the right side. Like, if, if, you, if you were doing the right thing, like, that's the side I'm on. If you're doing the wrong thing, I'm not rocking with you. So, Well, it's almost like an oxymoron, too, because the same people that are probably criticizing you are the ones that are probably chanting and raving, like, we need better police officers. Man. So, so it's like, man. do you do you really want better police officers, or do you just like pushing the agenda that all police officers are cricket? That's that's it. That's that, that's exactly it. Like you have to. There's no other. To me, there's no other option but to be in the middle. You, you have to be in the middle of this. Like you have to understand that there are community members who are doing crazy things out there that could potentially make community members look bad, right? And you have to understand that there are police officers doing the same that could potentially make police officers look bad. But you have to understand that that's the that is not the majority in either part. That that is by far not the majority in either part. So exactly, I think we've gotten so conditioned to just like to uh, feed in and buy into you know negative publicity because it's a popular yeah. thing to do. You know what I mean? If I sit here and say like, oh, I don't like the police and I'm against the police, then because that's such a hot topic and a popular topic, then you're now looked at as being you know popular. And vice versa, you know what I mean? If, you know, you think police work is the greatest thing ever and doesn't have any flaws, you know, and you're a member of the police force and yeah, you know, that's the popular thing to do. So if you go against the grain then you're wrong for it. So yeah, it, it, it kind of baffles me, man, the world that we live in, but it also motivates me. It gives me optimism because uh, I know that what the work that we're doing is leading in the right direction. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Actually, so I wanted to bring this up before we dive too deep into our, um, our topics today. Man, hey, Ryan, what's what's up with this video going around? So, actually, two videos. I don't know if you've seen the second one. I, I know the first one we, we we talked about briefly. The first one is the uh, the female white police officer who dropped the M-bomb. Oh, good good one. That, yeah, let's talk about it, bro. Yeah, yeah th- so. Let me ask you, is there any, let me ask you first, is there any yeah, okay. reason why that's acceptable? Ever. No, never. Never. No, I mean, so. For the listeners out there, um, I'm talking to Ryan a couple of days ago, and Ryan's like, "Man, we got we got to talk. We got to go live and talk about this video." Unfortunately, I couldn't go live at the time because I was packing for this trip. And I'm like, "Well, what video?" And he goes, "Man, there's a female white police officer who dropped the M bomb." I'm like, "No, that's not real. Not in 2019." You're like, "God, come on." You sent me the video. I watched it, and I was baffled. Like, could not wrap my mind around why she would even think it's okay to say that ever Uh, bro i somebody sent it to me and so i was thinking just like you like no there's no way like you know because sometimes people will send me stuff and i watch it i'm like yeah you know what i there's a a good explanation for this (laughs) yeah yeah are you kind of like oh well it it sounded like she said it but maybe she's like man this cut and dry this is cut dry so for our listeners there's a video that i sent to aj um where there's a female officers uh she is actually you know uh, having some dialogue with some guys that she's uh, talking to on her jo- on her job or whatever, and she basically goes out there and I can't remember what the exact line she said, but long story short, she threw the n word out there, and it was to some black people that she threw the n word out to, 
Yeah. Um, you ask me, man, I don't care what kind of situation it is. It doesn't make it right. Like that Never. that situation right there does not make it right. And and I don't know if she's going to try to say like, you know, I was trying to build some rapport with these guys or whatever. Or maybe she said it out of frustration. But there literally is no explanation for her dropping the N-bomb like that. And I'm like, you know, what is it that you're trying to accomplish here? Here we are. You got guys like me and you that are trying to move forward in this profession, trying to take, you know, you know, good strides forward. And then we get <laughs> set back by somebody just being reckless with their speech. Bruh, I, I, talking about it now, I'm still baffled, man. I still can't wrap my mind around, like, even the thought of, like, saying something like that, like, man so yeah foul Me mega foul <laughs> mega, mega foul mega like the foul. foulest of the foul she needs to All be right. punished and, and and the last thing before right. we move on the last thing that's scary about that is if if she can be so reckless in speech like that oh sorry about that y'all <laughs> if she can be so reckless in speech like that then um you know what else can she be reckless with while she's doing her job it, it, exactly and that's i just had this conversation with somebody earlier today is if you're willing to say something like that, knowing you got a body camera on, knowing you have an audience and knowing that they're recording you, what are you going to do when you don't have a body camera, when you don't have an audience and people aren't recording you? Exactly. Come on. Exactly. Come on. Bro. Yeah, yeah, she got to she got to go. Hey, listen, <laughs> she got to go. I, I'll be the first to say it. you got to go. Like, I, I don't trust you wearing the same badge that I wear. Mm -hmm. I, I work hard to earn this badge. I take pride in wearing this badge. Like, I would never in my life work beside somebody like that. She got to go. Hey, 100%. 100%, man. So what, what was the other video that you were going to bring up, AJ? So the other video, um, it looks like there's two police officers. Um, I think there was a fight that broke out. A bunch of uh, kids, a bunch of, like, teenagers. One of the police officers is on top of a kid, like, trying to arrest them. And then... The crowd like surrounds the um, the two officers trying to affect this arrest, and then they start like jumping the officers. Have oh, I saw that. And then the guy pulls out his pepper spray, and then like yeah, and they all start running. Oh, I hey. it was like a carnivore or something like that. It looked like yeah, it was like a fair or something. Yeah, man. So I guess my concern with the video is, um, you know, like a a majority of the accounts and a majority of my friends in real life are not police officers. Um, so, you know, I, I see a lot of like anti-police stuff, which I'm used to. Right. And if I have the time to, to break it down or, you know, drop some gems on somebody, I will. Um, somebody I consider my friend actually posted it and said, Hey, we need more of this instead of what we're seeing on the news. So I'm like, man, let me watch this video. And I watch it. And I'm like, man, like you're promoting, assaulting police officers because you feel the arrest is isn't justified man that's concerning bro that's scary is what that that's, is man that is very scary serious so i i haven't reached out to him yet because i just seen it uh either, i think it was last night um but yeah i gotta call my homeboy and be like hey man like we gotta talk we gotta have a heart to heart because you know we've, we've talked about it in the past like there's a time and a place to fight that fight there's a time and a place to fight that fight if you physically assault a police officer, you are giving him the right to assault you back and possibly use deadly force. Because in a situation like that, there's two police officers. I mean, there was probably, what, 20 to 30 kids? That 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 could be justified deadly force. Oh, 100%. And then the, the, to make matters worse, they're surrounding those officers. So now Man. they have access to the, all, the, all the tools that that officer has on Fire his belt. Arm. Firearms, yep. batons, pepper spray, yep. tasers. And again, yep. it goes back to promoting negativity, promoting being a part Man. of the problem. And so I really call people out. This is if you listen to our podcast or you listen to any of our content, this is a call out to you. Like, are you really somebody that's promoting positive change? If yeah. you're promoting positive change, then we shouldn't be endorsing conduct like that. I yeah. get it. Like, I get it. If there's an officer that's doing something corrupt. They're doing something that's foul. Yeah, let's call them to the rug. Yep, but there's methods them. of doing that. A prime example of that is me and AJ doing this podcast. We yeah. said, you know what? There's a better way to expose a lot of the cricket officers. That's yeah. the, a way to do that is doing a podcast. Freedom of speech, different things like that. Let's do it. But this is in a controlled environment. We can discuss it. We don't have to argue back and forth. So there's methods of doing it. But if you're not about doing things like that, then, you know, you're actually becoming a part of the problem. And there are people, be people that make the argument, well, 
you know, Martin Luther King back in their day, you know, it wasn't all kosher back then. And they had to, you know, they had to use some violence in order to make a point. And there's people will say that, but it's different now. We don't live, you know, there, there's not a, there's not a water fountain that says colors only and white people only. There's not a, you know, we're, we're not living in those same day. Is there still, are we free of racism in our, in our world, in our society today? Not, absolutely not. Absolutely not. There's still ignorant people out there. There's still people that do things because of their ignorance, because of their races, uh, you know, antics. However, there's still ways to go about combating those people. And yeah. so, you know, that situation, man, was a bad situation. You mm-hmm. ask me, man, I would have straight up, man, I would have, um, you know, that that's a bad, bad situation. All, 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 no matter which way you look at it. Yeah, yeah. And and if you look at, you know, like if you want to look at like history, the biggest statements made were peaceful. Yeah. Peaceful protests. Peaceful protests. Million Man March. Exactly. You know, I mean, like, like, like if you if you really want to use like history to to to, to back your point, you know, we, we could we could talk about that. Like a majority of the the huge statements made that allowed us to be where we are today were peaceful. And that's I the agree. way to do it because people are going to see who the real bully is and who the real bad person is when when you just sit there and you're like okay 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 and then you handle it the right way people are gonna be like man like man this ain't right they want to you know i want to stand up for this 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 ain't right so yeah, there's a time and a place like you can't go swinging on an officer because because one you don't you don't even know what's really going on like you might just see something you don't agree when you swing on an officer because hey, i'll tell you right now you swing on me in uniform it's a wrap <laughs> it's a wrap i'm yeah i'm putting you to bed so you know, so night, here's night. here's a challenge for our listeners if you are truly about promoting positive change, if you are not a police officer, I challenge you to post a positive police video and say, this is something more I want to see. If you are a police officer, I challenge you to post a video of somebody in the community that's probably not the same color as you, a minority, that's doing something positive in the community and see how hard, see how difficult that is for you. And I like the reason that. I say if it's, it's going to be difficult because again, if you if you know who you are, if you're a person of influence and people look to you, you know what I mean? It's going to be difficult because now you're putting yourself out there for people in your own group to start criticizing you and critiquing you. And that's yeah. what makes it hard. That's why everybody won't do it because they know if I post something positive to the group of friends that I have that are all negative police or, you know, if I'm a police officer and I'm posting, you know, something positive in the community that a gang member might be doing. I'm now subjecting myself to other people's opinion who I think are my friends or people I think I trust. So that's why I challenge you. If you are truly about promoting positive change, then do that. And then that's yeah. how you know you're yeah. now a part of the solution as opposed to the problem. That's it. That's it. But hey, be ready. Prepare yourself. Oh, yeah. Brace yourself. Because you, you, people are going to show their true colors. Brace trust yourself. me when I say that. People are going to be like, well, well, what you sharing this gang, man? What you supporting this person for? These are thugs and blah, blah, blah. Or These cops are crooked and blah, blah. You're going to be like, whoa, okay. I see where your mind is at. Let me <laughs> see it clear you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, you're going to see it. Me and AJ I like both that know, man. So I, I like that challenge. Hey, moving right along, man. So let's let's get in. Let's start the podcast now. I always say let's start the podcast now. So, <laughs> I like it. So, uh, man, uh, actually, the Savage actually had some good topics to talk about today. And, yeah, and thank you. Did. Shout out to the Savage for coming on the podcast last episode. Man, that was he a good episode, it. man. We, uh, I'm starting to think, man, the, the Savage has more fans than we do, bro. I got a fair foul, by the way. Go ahead, man. Let's let's hear it. A fair foul, y'all. Is it fair or foul that Billy went back? It changed all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was like, I don't man. like what I said right there. Let me go back and change that. I'm like, oh, well, can you edit mine? Like, oh, <laughs> man. So I, I don't think our listeners know what we're talking about, AJ. You got to let them know. Uh, I mean, it, it, it wasn't that big of a deal. But uh, <laughs> Billy, so Billy being the savage that he is and then the production guy and the media guy, he didn't like one of his responses during the podcast. So after we were done recording, he went back and re-recorded what he should have said <laughs> and then spliced it in there and made it sound like that was his answer. Like it, it flowed so good. I didn't even catch on to it. I was just like, man, I don't remember Billy saying that. I'm like, hold up. Let me send this text out real quick. Yeah, you, you would have never Billy, known, bro. Welcome man, to the world Billy, of technology. Yeah, Billy is an animal for that. But what made me laugh is like, it was like a deep, passionate discussion we were having. And like, Billy's voice was like, 
you know, guys, like, I think blah, blah, blah. And it just made me picture, like, Billy in his, like, in his basement <laughs> with a microphone, like, practicing his deep voice. Like, yeah, guys, you know. <laughs> well, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, he was probably at home with, with, with his wife. You know, she's in another room, and he's just getting all serious and stuff. And she's like, what are, you, what are you in there doing? <laughs> hey, what are you doing? I'm, oh, I'm man, that was hilarious. Spicing this bad boy up. But, yeah, but no, thanks again, did, Billy. Good, man. man. You, uh, we had a lot of good response, man. So uh, thanks again for that. Uh, moving right along. So one of the topics that Billy brought up um, to talk about today was, you know, the day in the life as a police officer, as well as uh, politics and policing. And uh, AJ and I kind of both agree. They kind of go in line with one another. So I'm going I'm to start off or I'm going to ask you, AJ. So tell me what a day in the life is like for you, man, as a police officer. Man, so a, a day in the life for me, um, you know, there's, there's, there's no day that's the same. Um, I have eight years on total being a police officer. And man like the the moment you think you've seen it all something crazy happens like something crazy happens and you're just like man like what what was that like i've never seen this before so um a, a typical day for me we have roll call for those of you who don't know um roll call is where first shift so i work second shift um so for me roll calls where first shift officers meet with second shift officers and just pass on information. Hey, this is what happened during our shift. This is who you should look out for. This guy has warrants. You know, this store got burglarized, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, after roll call, our sergeant addresses us. Um, we have, we have stand up roll call, so we, we get inspected. Um, our sergeant makes us stand all in line and, and um, at attention. He inspects us from head to toe, make sure we're fit for duty. Um, uniforms look good. Really? Shoes are polished. Yeah, yeah. Hey. You guys got stand up roll call like that every day? Every day. Yep, got to make sure the boots are shined. Got to make sure the shirt is white, creases in the pants. Wow, bro, I didn't know that. That's like that sounds like some straight academy stuff right there. Yeah, yes, yeah, every day. So now, what not happens, every. What happens, um, what happens if you like not shined up properly? You got to. He, he has a shoe shiner. If if you're not shaved, he has a a, a one blade razor. Got to cut <laughs> your face up. So. <laughs> So our sergeant is super cool. Um, I, I don't know if he listens to this or not, but um, he, he, he's super cool. He gives you the option. You could either take the paper for not being fit for duty. So you, you could take discipline like um, a written reprimand or you could take care of it immediately. Um, so normally you take care of it immediately because you don't want that paper in your file. Um, so yeah, after roll yeah, call, bro, I'll go ahead and shave that up. Sorry, so don't even trip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I cut my face up. Give me that razor that everybody else used. Um so uh, after roll call, we're assigned our cars. Uh, Jones and I take the same car every single day. Um, and then we just go at it, man. You know, we, uh, we, we have to take dispatch runs. So, you know, if something's going on in the city, someone called 911 because their house got broken into or a, a crash, that, that, that's the priority. If the uh, board is clear, then we just go out and we do our thing in the community, man. We're finding community members to talk to, hitting up the rec centers, following up with all the kids we mentor and, making goofy videos and out dancing Ryan. Now, yeah, right. Now, you, <laughs> you know that ain't true. <laughs> now, I got a question for you. Now, you and I have had many discussions about, like, obviously policing in Ohio and stuff like that. Um, yeah. You you know, from, from just, you know, conversing with you, it sounds like Ohio can be pretty crazy. You've gotten multiple shootings and things like that. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? So you, you go to that stuff, but then you also do a lot of positive stuff for you know the community you i see constantly you posting videos of you racing kids or jones racing kids and things like that how do you like change your mindset like when you go from one call to another you know what i mean because and you're pretty consistent about posting positive content but i know and and i'm and i'm sure i don't know if our audience knows this but every single day it's not like you're always doing positive stuff or you it's not like you just experience positivity for you know 10 yeah. hours a shift you know, I think, uh, like, not being funny, man, I just think we're, we're wired differently, man. Like, I think police officers are, they got a couple screws. We got a couple screws loose. Um, what's, what's funny about you asking that question is uh, a couple weeks ago, I was working with uh, my buddy Hale, and he was the one who uh, was in, in the first foot race that kind of, like, started all of them off. Um, and we did that foot race. And an hour after that foot race, we were on scene of a homicide. And Hale looks at me, he goes, man, we have a crazy job. I'm like, well, what makes you say that? And he goes, I mean, we were just like playing with these teenagers, you know, racing them on foot, goofing off, taking selfies. And here we are guarding a, a dead body on a homicide scene. And it's just like, for me, like, I can only take so much negativity. Like, mm -hmm. like I need some positivity in my life. Like, it, it makes me feel good. Like, that's just like where I'm comfortable. Um, 
So, you know, we see very bad things. So after seeing that bad thing, I'm like, I need some positivity. Let's, let's go talk to a kid. Let's go find a, a, a new community man, member that we haven't talked to before and get to know them, hear their story and whatnot, and just kind of get that weight off your back. I will say this, though, and this, this might upset some police officers out there, but I, I got to put it out there. Something that I hear often is we don't have time. <laughs> we don't have time. We're chasing the radio. Listen, I don't work for a mega department, but we have over 2,000 officers where I work. It's uh, the 14th largest city um, in the nation. Wow. And I work in the busiest zone for that department, and we are busy. I find time. If you, if you have time to sit at the substation, watch TV, or, or sit in the parking lot, spoon with your partner, or eat, you could be eating at a park, talking to a community member, right? Like, instead of spooning in a, a secluded parking lot, go to a rec center and spoon in that parking lot and get to know the kids. Like, there's always time. Like, you just have to find it, and you have to be, um, you have to make it a priority. Man, I agree with that 100%. And, and the reason I agree with that is because there's so many, and every officer knows out there that I'm talking to, there's so many times or downtime in our shift that, you know, we're actually doing something like, you know, stupid, playing around with one, one another, playing jokes, whatever it may be, or even just kind of just sitting there typing paper or whatever, whatever it may be. But there's always time to make an impact in the community. Always time. You know yes, what I mean? So, yeah, yes. when people do say, you know, we can't... Um, you know, there's no time and stuff like that. There's definitely, there's always time, but you know, you just got to figure out what, uh, when you can make that time. The other thing too, that I was going to say is, um, the reason I asked you that question as far as, you know, do you ever, you know, feel yourself going from like a negative, a negative call and then going to a positive call? Um, I, I said that even though it's a rhetorical question because, you know, I've done that myself. I've got on calls where, you know, there was like a, I had to give a CPR to, you know, a drowning baby and that baby ends up dying. And then, uh, you know, the very next thing I go out and I'm doing something in the community with uh, some other members. And so just like you, man, I feed off of positivity. I need that positivity in my life. That's what helps. But at the same time, you know what I mean? Like we, we need to do those things uh, because, if not, that's what's going to pick us. If not, that's what's going to drive us into the grave. You know what I mean? Because yes. this is a mental job. There, there, There's a reason why, you know, police officers, uh, the number one cause of death in 2018 was suicide. is because they're not dealing with that that trauma correctly. And so, you know, it's it amazes me that, yeah, we can go from, you know, giving CPR or going from like a shooting or a pursuit or, you know, whatever it may be, and then go right to the very next call where somebody needs us to, to counsel their kid because, you know, um, you know, they're not doing good in school. And the other thing, too, that baffles me sometimes, and there's going to be some other officers that might get mad at me when I say this. Um, we've all gone to those calls where, you know, mom needs somebody to uh, talk to their son because their son's not doing well in school. I get it. You know, a lot of times some officers will say, you know, it's not my job. Be a parent be a parent or this or that. Like, I get it. You know what I mean? But at the same time, if we're being honest with ourselves, we have to realize that um, there's we're living in a society now where there's not a lot of fathers in the home. And so you have a lot of women that are looking for somebody to father their children because in some aspects, they don't know how. They don't understand. And so shout out, especially on this Mother's Day weekend, shout out to all the mothers out there that are out there raising men and doing what they're supposed to be doing. But at the same time, there's some things that women cannot provide to a growing a growing man. And so when they call the police because they need us to counsel him on something or they need us to help him with something. Yeah. You know what? Look at it from the opportunity of, you know what? There is a situation right now where there's not a man in that home. And maybe I might be the only positive man in this child's life or this kid's life. And so I need to show him some positivity, man. So uh, I, I, I just encourage you guys out there. And, not, and like I said, not to get on the whole, you know, uh, you know, women can't do th the same things as men or men can't do the same things as women, because that's not what this conversation is about. This conversation is truly about there's not being, um, you know, a lot of dads in the home right now to father our children. Yeah, 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 absolutely, man. That's, that's, that's a good point. And I mean, you I said it on a video a while ago, man, and I just like I, I try to constantly remind myself, like, you never know how big of an impact you could have just by one simple act of kindness. Mm -hmm. I mean, one one simple act of kindness could change a generation a family's generation. You see a young man in the street or, 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 or a young female walking on the street. You got your car and you start talking to him and you figure out like, oh, yeah, you come from a single parent home. You know, you don't have a father. You know, 
I want, I want to teach you something. I want to teach you how to change a tire. I want to teach you how to tie a tie. Mm. Like that young man or that young woman will remember that forever. And then when they have kids, they will make sure like, you know what? Like, I'm going to teach my kid these things because I didn't have a parent in the household to teach me these things. And had a police officer come along and teach me X, Y, and Z. And she's like, you don't know. Like, you don't know. Like, taking five minutes out of your day could change a whole generation. And I, I, I hear people complain all of the time. And this goes for both sides. So, you know, I like to, I like to be in the middle. So we'll, we'll talk from the community standpoint, right? If a community member takes five minutes out of their day to, to get to talk to a police officer once a week, can you imagine how your perspective on law enforcement might change by the end mm-hmm. of the year? Mm-hmm. Can you imagine? And then think about this. If a police officer takes five minutes out of their day once a week to talk to a community member in the area they work, can you imagine how their perspective might change? That's all it takes. So instead of all this complaining, you know what? Police officers are this way. Police officers are that way. Community members are this way. Community members are that way. Take five minutes. Take five minutes, talk to somebody, get to know somebody. Because I guarantee you, once you take five minutes, that five minutes is going to turn into 20. And instead of once a week, it's going to turn into four times a week. And then you're going to start to realize, like, man, you know what? You bring up a very valid point when you say these things. Whether you're a police officer or a community member. And it's going to open your eyes to a lot. And you're going to start picking up on more things. Like, you know what? When I see this on the news, maybe that's why this is happening. So instead of complaining, do something about it. Just, Man. just take the time to get to know somebody. And that statement you said is true. And I know that to be a fact because the students in our chosen program, we have a few students in there that didn't like police officers before they started it. And that was 10 months ago. And now uh, I asked them that same question last last week, actually, because we're, we're closing things up. And I asked them, hey, so, you know, do you like police officers now? And they're like, yeah, you know what, 100%. And I was like, well, what made that, what made that happen? And they're like, because I got to know you and I got to know your team. And once they get to know us and get to know who we are as people, they realize like, man, the police work is just a job. It's not who we are as people. And we've talked about that so many times, like, you know, police work is just a job. It's not who I am. You know what I mean? And when when members of the community can understand that, then maybe they might have a little bit of a better heart. And the same thing for, you know, police officers. You got to realize that every member of the community is not like that criminal that you just got locked, got done locking up. You know what I mean? Even that criminal that you did lock up, they still human too. There's some, there's a reason behind their actions, not to justify their actions. I'm not sitting here to say, oh, they, there's justification behind their actions, but there's a reason behind the action. And if you understood the reason behind the action, then it might give you a little bit more empathy as to why they're doing what they're doing. And maybe once you find out what they're doing or why they're doing what they're doing, that might actually give you a place to start when trying to look for the solution. Yep, and, and and for the police officers that that listen to this, or f- for the police officer that may hear this message, um, trust me when I say this, it makes your job so much easier. Oh man, it makes your job so much easier. I can't tell you how many times I've showed up to a chaotic scene where there's like ten officers, there's uses of force, and I show up, and just because the community trusts me, because I invest my time in the community, I could literally just yell, "Hey, everybody, shut up." And the mm-hmm. police officers will look at me and the community members will look at me and I'll just, I'll take charge. Hey, Steve, get inside. Like, stop <laughs> exactly. running your mouth. Exactly. And then, you know, hey, uh, officer, whatever, get in your car, man. Like, chill. Exactly. And then within five minutes of me being on scene, like, everything is good. Exactly. We can shake hands and go our other ways. Like, trust me, it'll make your job easier. So if you ain't going to do it for nothing else. Do it to make a job. Easy. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly, like, <laughs> man. It makes it make everything so much more easier, man. Oh, and work smarter. Oh, work smarter, not harder, baby. That's what they That's say. It. So that is it. But you're gonna see, man. If you start if you start doing it for that reason, you're gonna you're gonna find somebody. You're gonna be like, man, I kinda I'm kinda taking a liking to this family. You're gonna start to invest in them and before you know it, man, you're gonna have kids, you mentoring and all of that stuff. And it's like my it's like my mentors. Man. It's like my mentor always tells me, man, Ryan, you need to invest in the community before you need to invest in the community. Man, and I'm like, man, what? you know, what? that's that's such a powerful get to know the community that you police before you have to know them. You know what that's I mean? It, and, and, and that's because and that's so true, man. So, you know, going back to a day in the life of uh, for me. Um, so my day in the life as an officer actually changed uh, when I became a school resource officer. Very yeah. similar to AJ. You know, I was, uh, you know, same thing. We would have our briefing. I would show up to work. Sometimes I would work out before. And then right after that, I would get dressed, take a shower, get dressed, go to briefing. And then in briefing, you know, we go over the problems of the day, you know, what's going on in certain, uh, you know, areas of the community, what, what we need to focus on, what we need to hit, things like that. 
And then, uh, and then you go out there and just start your day, man. Start patrolling. Um, go out there, be proactive. Uh, look for, you know, look to take people to jail. But also, um, you know, making those positive deposits in the community through community policing. And then obviously responding to calls, calls for service. So that was a traditional, uh, you know, way of work for the patrol guy that works at my job. Uh, but now as a school resource officer, it's a lot different, man. Uh, especially because I ser- serve in a dual capacity as a school resource officer and an investigator. So, um I'm a, like I said, I'm a school resource officer, uh, by, uh, for full time, but at the same time, I'm also, as an investigator, I'm assigned to the detective bureau. So I do detective work as well. So I have a caseload. I have a uh, big time. Uh, no, no, bro. No, I'm big like, a, time. I'm detective like, detective you, you, man. No, nah, no, nah, you got security and then you got security thighs. I'm like security thighs, bro. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> so, uh, so yeah, they get, I have a case though, you know, anything from burglaries to, uh, you know, um, what do you call it? Uh, identity theft, all those different types of crimes. It's my job to follow up on it try to uh, bring a close to the case. Um, but more importantly, going back to the school resource officer side of things, that's an interesting spot because, you know, it's not your traditional police work as you would think, you know, you're going to a high school. And, uh, so I go to the high school. A lot of my new partners are the principal assistant principals, counselors and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, Mm -hmm. uh, just as I would at my day job, I would go to on Tuesdays, we have like our own little briefing and talk about the issues on campus. Um, but my sole purpose to be on that campus is to be one, a resource to the, the staff and the kids, but also make sure everybody's safe. And mm-hmm. so, you know, like tomorrow, actually, I have to go look at the plans for all the schools in our district as far as the uh, lettering of the building. So that way, if there's an emergency, you know, if the first responders, once they show up, they got to be able to identify which building is which. So tomorrow I'm working mm-hmm. on that. So I, I, I like to think of myself as like the chief of police of my own little community. You know what I mean? Because that's that's what my, my job is, is to make sure everybody's safe. But I'm also a mentor as well. And that's obviously where Race to Date came from is because kids come to me all the time. And have issues that they're dealing with on a personal level, you know, some a lot more steep than others. And so it's a very rewarding position. And I think it's one of the, the funnest assignments I've ever done just because, oh, again, sure. you know, I get, I get to see I get to see those deposits every single day. And that's the unfortunate part of some police officers that work the street is you don't get to see what your investment is down the road. Like I get yeah. to see those investments, you know, I get to see the little seed uh, flourish and and sprout. You know what I mean? When we started at the beginning of the year, I saw kids that were, you know, not doing so well. And then now as they're getting ready to graduate, I see them turning a new leaf. So you get to actively see that the investments or the deposit that you guys are making that we're making really pay off in the long term. Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine how rewarding that is, man. Can't imagine. Yeah, it's it's phenomenal, man. So, you know, that's just another uh, position as the police department. But every every part, every officer that's a part of an organization, there's so many different hats that we wear on a daily basis. You can be a, a, a narc unit, which is obviously your uh, narcotics investigator. You can be a gang investigator. You can do, um, you know, whatever it is. I mean, you can fly helicopters, motorcycles, scuba dive to, you know, on the dive team, whatever it may be. There's so many different hats that we wear. Uh, yeah. But at the end of the day, what I come back to is if somebody looks at me as a police officer from the community, they're going to see me just like any other officer that's a police officer. They're not going to look at the assignments I do. They're not going to look yeah. at, you know, what my uniform looks like. They're not going to look at the cars that I drive. They're going to see a badge and they're going to see a nameplate and they're going to associate me to being a police officer just like everybody else. And that's 100%. why the work that we do with Breaking Barriers United and It's Needed is so invaluable because – we need to change the perception for law enforcement on a whole. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And, uh, you know, now that we're like sitting here and we're, we're talking about this, it kind of gets me thinking that um, you being a resource officer, you probably have more political issues that you have to deal with than the average street cop because you probably have principles. Oh, like, bro, 100%, it, 100%. So, yeah. Like you said, not only so in my current role, like I said, I have my uh, my boss, which is my sergeant of the detective bureau. That's my my direct reporting supervisor. And so there are certain things that we have to do that he needs to know on a daily basis uh, if something happens at the school. So let's say, for example, like if there's a bomb threat or there's a threat to, you know, kill somebody or whatever it may be like, not only does he needs to know, but he also needs to communicate that all the way up to the chief of police who in turn needs to talk to the, the superintendent 
superintendent of the schools to make sure there's no further issue. And then on the flip side of that, at the school campus, you know, if something happens that goes crazy, I need to communicate that with my principal, who in turn needs to go up her chain of command, which is obviously risk management. And then from risk management, it goes to the superintendent. And so, and then collectively, we have this thing called, it's like, we have it, we have it like four times a year. It's called the key communicators meeting. And that's where all of the uh, SROs, along with the uh, city manager, the the superintendent and the chief of police we all get together to discuss key issues so it's a really gotcha. a cool spot for me as an sro because you know i'm looked at as hey what's going on in our city i'm, I'm a decision maker you know what i mean and so uh it's a very political position um there's certain things that we have to you know disseminate very quickly whereas others we got to take our time because the other thing that you got to look at is when parents get involved you're dealing with oh. a whole other thing man oh it, it's it is crazy when you start oh, to involve parents into a situation, man. Like, you know, uh, and especially because not all parents, their values are different. Their their morals are different. And so, you know, you have to th look at, okay, am I going to piss such and such off if I say this? Or is such and such going to be pissed off if I say it this way? So it, it, it's very, very political, man. And, and, and that's unfortunate, man. I, I hate to say, I don't like to say I don't like politics because I understand the importance of politics, but I yeah. hate to do things in the name of politics. Yes, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, something that that I've learned over the past few years is there's power in politics, man. There is power in politics. Um, you know, prior to my law enforcement career, I, I heard it, you know, but I didn't really have a, a understanding or a grasp on what that really meant. Um, you get in a certain position, man. I mean, if you say something, it happens no matter what it is, no matter who, is, who it concerns. It happens and it happens fast and no one will ever know why it happened, but it will happen. Um, and that that's kind of something that a majority of people don't think about when they see officers acting a certain way or are policing a certain way mm -hmm. um, or being more prevalent in a certain area. Um, there's power in politics. And, and, and when it comes down to it, you know, we're, we're government employees. Um, we can be ordered to do things and mm -hmm. we have to do those things or we could lose our job um, in the way that we feed our families and, and care for ourselves. Um, I, I've had it happen before, you know, where I've been ordered to do something that I didn't want to do. At the end of the day, you have to do it. You took that oath. Well, let, let's um, let, let's stay right there because that's a good topic you bring up, AJ, because there's officers out there that would argue um, and there's community members out there that would argue that yeah. that's why the system is corrupt. Um, cause I've had people bring that up to me before. For example, we had that, we had the, the post a while back when I said there's no quotas in law enforcement and I had to yeah. correct myself when saying actually there has been quotas in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. It's an illegal practice. So you actually have in some areas of this country, uh, there are officers that have done some stuff that is not right, obviously corrupt stuff. And, um, and a lot of times people have, they've done it in the name of, uh, because that's what I was told to do as a direct order. And so I agree with what you're saying, but then on the flip side of that, and I know, and I know uh, you're in agreement with me on this, is that if I'm told to do something that there's a, there's a fine line between doing something because I'm told to do it and doing something because it's the right thing to do. Um, oh yeah. And so unfortunately, there there are times that if somebody tells you to do the wrong thing, and then I would actually have to give up my job to say I can't do the wrong thing. Yes. You know what I mean? But yes. I'm not going yes. to do it because uh, you're telling me to do it if I know this is wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. If this is wrong, I'm just not going to do it. You know what I mean? Because I I have a moral and ethical code that I live by, especially in my relationship with Christ. And I know AJ is the same way. So I would say, no, I'm not going to do it. Uh, but unfortunately, you do have people out there. You have officers out there that, you know, for this job obviously becomes more important to them. And so they would obviously sacrifice, you know, what they their, uh, their moral ethical code that they live by because somebody told them to do the right thing. And the only reason I bring that up is because this has been a hot topic amongst people because there's a lot of people out there that think the system just overall is just corrupt. And yeah. I, I, I don't agree with that. And that's and the only reason I could say stand here and stand tall and say that I don't agree with the system is, is corrupt is because I work and I am a part of the system. And yeah. as yep. long as I've been a part of this system, 
Nobody has ever told me to go out and, ar- and arrest somebody because they're black. Nobody has ever gone out there yeah. and told me to arrest somebody because they're Hispanic. Nobody right, has right. ever gone out there and told me to pull this person over because he looks this way. Um, yep. Nobody's ever told me to do those things. Nobody has ever specifically told me, Ryan, if you don't have 10 tickets by the end of the month, you're not getting promoted. So nobody's yeah. ever told me to do those things. And so that system that I'm a part of is the same system that all police officers are across the country. So yeah. I can't sit here and say that the system is corrupt when yeah. nobody's actually told me to do no corrupt action. Yeah. Now, I'm you not know, saying that doesn't exist. It, it happens, right, right. but I'm, nobody's oh, yeah. told me to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's uh, like when you say that, it kind of makes me think like it's actually almost the opposite because like I hear more comments like, man, you sure do have a lot of black people in your mug shop, like, <laughs> meaning you've arrested a lot of black people in your career more times than not. So it's kind of like it's kind of the opposite of what people think. Like if, if you really think about it, at least for me, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like the things that I'm hearing is like, man, you want to arrest white people? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, comments like that. And it's just like, man, like, yeah, you really put things into perspective with that. Yeah. You know? And so at the end of the day, for me, what it comes down to is like, when are we going to start holding each other accountable? Like, I think you and I do a really good job of it. I mean, we hold police officers accountable. We hold members of the community accountable, but in going down the line of politics, I was just telling somebody the other day, the reason I don't like our current state of politics is because I, I believe that political parties are doing things to prove the other party wrong as opposed to doing it because it's the right thing to do. Bruh, bruh, I don't think that hurts when you said that, man. They, they I'll, I'll, I'll say that. it one more time. Man. The reason I do not currently endorse modern day politics is because politicians are so focused on doing things to prove the, doing things to prove the other political party wrong as opposed to doing it because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. And that carries over to everything else in life. Like we we talked about that at the beginning of this podcast. Like when are we going to start holding people accountable? At that fight you just you mentioned at that carnival. How come we didn't have people there saying back up, back up, let these officers do their job as opposed to these people trying to fight the police officers. And exactly. the argument to that, I already know what the argument is going to be is oh because the police officers were doing something corrupt. You know, we people need to start holding each other accountable. If you're a member of the community, hold people of the community accountable. If you see people doing some corrupt things, hold them accountable. Like some stand up. Like if, if you're at that carnival, if you're the one at the carnival, you see all these people trying to beat up these officers. Man, somebody needs to step up and say, no, nah, back up, back up. Yeah, yeah. And that's the sad part about it is like, no, I actually expected a community member to come out of somewhere and like help the officers out. And, and that wasn't the case. Which is mm-hmm. which is surprising, and it just goes to show that that may be the way that we're going. And you know, somebody needs to step up. Like at the end of the day, we know we know right from wrong, right? Like you, you we got to handle these situations better. And there's a time and a place for things like this. Like, yeah, that, that video was just disturbing. Yeah, as a whole. it is, man. But we're moving in the right direction. And yes, there are politics and police work. There's politics in anything you do, unfortunately. But you know what? When you have people like myself and AJ that you know, don't allow politics to clout our decision making. That's the hope I think we can all find as a majority. So there's still hope yeah. out there. There's still people that are not corrupted by politics. And so uh, mm-hmm. as long as that exists, man, we, we can still move forward in the right direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree, man. I, I completely agree. So uh, I know you, uh, AJ's out in police week, so we're going to get ready to wrap this podcast up soon. Let him get back to police week. Uh, I have a fair foul, though, man. So uh, this fair foul is hilarious, bro. So we have a guy in our city who, uh, I mean, he, he's he been arrested many of many of times. He's a, he's a known felon, so he can't carry firearms or whatever. So anyways, he... Uh, he was work, he works at a marijuana dispensary and so and then, mind <laughs> you this is a story this is a story that uh, you know my, my partner told me so I just thought it was hilarious I was like I got to use this for the podcast so this guy works at a marijuana dispensary and you know in California where marijuana is legal now so it's not that big of a deal that he works at a marijuana dispensary whatever so anyways they go on a contact with this guy and as they are contacting him he has a holster on an empty holster like gun holster mm-hmm. and they're like dog like why you have an empty holster on like where's the gun at and he's like oh man i promise you i don't got no real gun i don't got no gun he was like well why do you got a gun on you so he was like well if you look in the trunk um you'll find there's a pellet gun in there so he's like so they're like all right whatever so they go to the trunk bro what they go to the trunk and like buried beneath like between the seats like they find this gun and it looks like a real gun like looks like a real gun and everything but sure enough they inspect it go bro and it's a pellet gun so they're like, dog, why do you got a pellet gun? And he's like, well, because at the dispensary I work at, like, 
you know, if somebody comes in there to like do something, like I, I, <laughs> I carry this, this pelican. So they're like, dog, why would you care? <laughs> why would you carry a pellet gun? Like, what happens if somebody comes in there with a real gun, bro? And, and you gonna lose that battle. <laughs> like, you are gonna lose. That are you battle, gonna point your sure. pellet gun up and say like, you know, <laughs> and hope that they don't they don't try to get no gun mm-hmm. battle? Hey, so fair or foul? Is it, <laughs> fair or foul? Is it fair that this man trying to use a pellet gun to deter criminal? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I mean, it's. I give him credit for like creativity, but you're gonna lose that battle, man. You you bring a pellet gun to a real gun fight, you're gonna lose that ten times out of ten. Bruh, bruh, uh, straight up, bro, straight up. Man. Unless so, you're a really good shot and like shoot him in the eye or something. Like other than that, duh, you know, like, I was major L. I was cracking up when they told me that story. I was like, this dude literally brought a pellet gun. Works with a pellet gun. As a security officer, like like he gonna stop something with and that. He probably, he probably think he that deal too. Like yeah, you see it, you see yeah. it, deal. <laughs> see it, Beretta, Beretta, son, Beretta, B-B gun, uh, BB, <laughs> BB. What y'all know about it? Yeah, CO2 oh cartridge. man, no, that's hilarious. But hey, man, it's a pleasure. Uh, you know, always wrapping it up with you, AJ. Man, next next podcast, I want to hear all about Police Week, man. How everything went. Um, yeah. Before we yeah. end, this this podcast is being brought to you uh, by the one and only Breaking Bears United. Doing some big things right now. Big, big things coming your way. I mean, go ahead. Tell them about the conference. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just getting there. Tell, conference tell is the coming conference. up. Con- matter of fact, I could tell you exactly right now. We are, because if you go to our website, BreakingBearsUnited.com, we actually mm-hmm. got a live countdown on there. So, mm-hmm. hold on, hold on. Let me see. Let me see. Breaking Barriers united.com i can't type right now let's see we are officially 78 days away from the conference y'all so we got some key key people coming out all over from all over i got a chief of police from minnesota that's coming out uh aj has some people coming out from ohio i just actually got an email today from a superintendent of schools the san Bernardino unified that's going to be there so this is something you guys don't want to miss get your tickets it's going to be a good time this is not going to be a boring conference it's going to be a good a good time with good resources and good tools for you to take back to your city oh, so make sure you're there oh the best the best tools to take back and you got a crazy host you your host is <laughs> off the charts like you got man, who, man, who's the host man, who's the host man I'm the host. <laughs> I'm the host. I'm, oh, I'm running I the show. I'm a be, hey, I forgot. I'm telling people when to move, how to move, and and everything else. So, oh man, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> Yo, the one and only Oh No is a Popo will be the host of the uh, host of the event. So it's gonna be a good time, guys. Get your tickets. Uh, again, there's some good things coming. A lot of a lot of good things. I mean, I can't I can't even begin to explain. So, but thanks again, AJ. I, I appreciate it, man. Any any last parting words before we get ready to get off this podcast? stay safe and be smart that's it that's the message for today stay safe and be smart i agree 100 percent. stay safe be smart y'all we love you guys we appreciate you guys uh, tuning in hey if you guys do like the podcast please 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 don't just subscribe but also leave us a review leave us some comments either on mm-hmm. uh, on our podcast or on instagram we love to hear your feedback your feedback is what helps this podcast to continue to move in the right direction so yeah. with that being said we love you guys take care and we'll see y'all next week peace <laughs> <laughs>